So we're gonna be doing something a bit different today. I'm gonna be taking two tutorial ideas and combine them into one. So simply we've done infographic videos in the past and we've also have done plenty of vector animation videos. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna combine those two together and we're gonna create an awesome infographic vector animation. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So I'm really excited about this tutorial because this is gonna be an awesome vector infographic tutorial because if you're ever working on projects that require you to showcase data, and you're gonna be able to do that in a really awesome and stylized way with any sort of graphic out there. So you're simply gonna be able to show data with whatever object you know in a vector that you're talking about and the best thing about this tutorial is pretty much automated we're going to be working with some really cool expressions so there's not many keyframes in this tutorial and i'm going to show you everything from the start to the beginning so without wasting more time let's jump into our tutorial let's get started so first we got to get our vector icon and i'm going to breeze right through this process but if you want to learn the complete workflow between illustrator and after effects i recently done a video on that i'll link it in the description but so if you want to get your hands on unlimited free vector icons in illustrator i got this from freepix.com and you can literally download limited files i will link that in the description so you can download any icon you're looking to do for free but simply once you open up an illustrator file all you have to do is select the icon that you want copy it go to file new and we'll do 1920 by 1080 create a new document and paste that in there and we can scale this up so simply from here we got to figure out what we want to animate instead of after effects and we'll put it into its own layers right here in illustrator so we'll go ahead and create some new layers down here and we'll open up our layer one and we'll grab each group that we want to animate into its new layer and we'll do that for each one so each of those in its own layer awesome if you have no idea how this process works and I'm running through this please watch that video in the description it will show you the entire process between illustrator and after effects or just watch the illustrator portion of that video and then you can jump back over to this one so when you have your illustrator file ready to go just go to file save as and then save it all right when you have after effects loaded up all you need to do is bring that illustrator file into the project window of after effects it'll ask you how you want to import it click composition click ok then we'll open up the composition and then if you save it as 1920 by 1080, we can easily just go up to composition, composition settings, and change the name of this. So I'll just call it tut or main in your case. Click OK. So now we have our icons in here. And if you save them in individual layers in Illustrator, now you have separate control over those elements here in After Effects to animate. And just because everyone's animation is going to be different, I'm not going to go ahead and show that because this is all about infographic. But remember to watch that video in the description so you can learn this process. It's simply with these wind turbines. All I did was hit R on our keyboard for rotation. I'll click the stopwatch and I typed in time asterisk 30 to make sure that I would have that animation. So if you're following along with me, that's all you have to do for each of the wind turbines. So now that we have our animation, our infographics in here, now we can actually do the main bulk of this tutorial, which is this you know, infographic animation right here, which is really easy to do. So when you're done here, go ahead and grab all your layers, go to layer pre-compose, and we'll call this vector animated. Awesome. All right, I went ahead and just threw it in the background, but to get started on this, it's really easy to do. So what we'll do is we'll grab, first of all, the pen tool, click on the word fill, set this to none, click OK. Click on the word stroke, set this to solid color, and click OK. And simply all we'll do is click a point here and hold down shift on our keyboard to draw a line straight across like this. And now we have our line in here and we can rename this layer to line. Awesome. Then what we'll do is grab the ellipse tool here. Just click and hold down, grab the ellipse tool. Go ahead and click on the word fill, set this to solid color, and we'll turn off the stroke. From here, what we'll do is draw a perfect circle like this. Hold down shift on your keyboard and we'll simply just put that right there. So now we'll have like an end point where we'll put our stats and you know, that's cool. And then we'll grab both these layers that we just created and pre-compose it and we'll just call this bar. And before we create some of the other elements that we need to create, I want to be able to tie this all together with just like one parameter. So we'll go ahead and get that started now. We'll go up to layer, new adjustment layer. I'll rename this layer to control and we'll go up to effect, expression controls, and we'll grab a point control. Then we'll go to our bar here and we'll hit P on keyboard for position and simply we'll all click the stopwatch for the position. Go to our control, grab that pick whip and put that to the point control right there. So now, bam, we can easily change this with the expression. And this is important because we're gonna be tying other elements to this and we wanna have it all under one control. So then what we can do is grab like our textile tool and we just type out the number zero because this is where we're gonna have our statistics start at, at zero. 
and we'll just put that right there. Since we already have our expression tied to something, what we need to do here is go to Effect, Distort, and we'll grab Transform. And we'll all click the stopwatch for position. And we'll go back to our control layer, grab that pick whip, and pair it to the point control. So this way, bam, this is together, and that's nice. And what we do here is grab our number layer, go up to Edit, Duplicate, and if you want to put like, you know, something else there, so maybe I'll do like uh, W for watts, so that'll be like our metric. And you know, you can put it next to it, whatever you want to do. We'll come back to it and adjust it later. But now, simply, those are both tied together very easily. Great. So that's just if you want to have like a metric when we count this up. All right, so then the last thing we want to do is obviously as this goes up, we want to be able to update the look of our vector object. And it's really easy to do this as well. So what we're going to do is go to Layer, New, Solid. All right, and we'll just call this Matt. And, and if your name is Matt, then yes, I just called your name out, but I put an extra E in there, so it's interesting. And what we'll do here is first of all, we'll go to Effect, Generate, Fill, and I guess I could have made the solid any color that I wanted to do, but I like using the fill because it's just a little bit quicker for me to change things. And then we'll go to Effect, uh, cut Distort, and we'll grab Transform. And once again, we'll all close the stopwatch for position, and we'll just parent that to the point control again within, within that control layer. Awesome. So now we just got to put this above the bar layer like this. And simply what we'll do is grab our vector layer and duplicate it. Grab our mat and put it in between both of those vector layers. Toggle switch the modes until you see the track mat. And set the track mat for the mat layer to alpha mat. So now you'll see that the top portion of this is kind of like in a loading screen phase. And now we'll go back to our control layer. Everything is tied together, which is perfect. Exactly what we need to do for like this loading up effect. And that is awesome. So you can start this here at the bottom, which this could be like a 0%, doesn't really matter. And then you can add your keyframe for your point and then you can move forward to like say four seconds to see like maybe that's how long it's going to take and we can move this up perfect so now bam the only thing that we have to do is update our number and then we're essentially done with this so this is very easy to do and i'll teach you the expression here we'll grab our control layer we'll go up to effect expression controls and we're gonna grab a slider control awesome Go to our text layer, which is that number, which is zero. We'll open it up. We'll go to the source text. You know, make sure you open up text, go to source text. I'll oh, click that stopwatch. And we'll simply click on control. We'll grab the pick whip, you know, put it to the slider control. All right, awesome. Then what we'll do here is we'll come here to the beginning of our expression. What we're going to do is type in capital M and type out math dot round. And then do an open parenthesis, delete that other parenthesis, and go to the end here and do an end parenthesis. So you just got to do math.round, open parenthesis there, delete the second parenthesis that comes up, and then just put that end parenthesis. And we'll click off of this. Beautiful. Now, we'll add a keyframe for the slider control. We'll go to the four second mark, which is right here. And we can increase this to whatever number it needs to say. And we'll go ahead and grab all of our keyframes here and hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy ease keyframes. So now I'll run us through this and here's our count up infographic, whatever that unit needs to say. We're able to use vector objects and have a count up unit. And that is really awesome. And because I'm always looking for ways to increase the value of our compositions, we've created the Motion Graphics Starter Pack, which has hundreds of pre-made templates within this pack. And one tool that we like to use is clusters. Um, and in this pack, we can come here to our motion graphics folder and we can go to our clusters and we can take a look at a handful of these pre-made accent motion graphics and we just click on apply and it automatically applies these pre-made accent motion graphics from our template into our composition just to add more levels of detail to our composition. And now there seems like a little bit more excitement in this composition. That's why we made it because it's a quick drag and a drop and you can easily change your colors out. We can go to those compositions and you know just easily change the color of any graphic that we have with our basic controls and then go back into your main composition and boom it automatically updates it and also in this we have plenty of pre-made animated backgrounds that you can easily add and preview before you apply it and we also have nearly 200 titles in this pack with accent motion graphics already applied to some of them or you can just grab our regular titles 
and find something that works for you. So we have a handful of elements in here to help you save time and produce meaningful work. So if you want to check out our motion graphics starter pack, you can check our link in the description. And if you do pick it up, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you. So that's how we can combine infographics and vectors together to create some really awesome stylized infographic content. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.